Okay, this video deals with the dorsal column pathway, uh, an afferent neuronal pathway that carries sensory information to the brain. So let's look at some of the details here. The dorsal column pathway. What kind of information is relayed by the dorsal column pathway? Two-point discrimination, vibration sense, and proprioception. Two-point discrimination can be uh, measured in a patient by taking a bent paper clip or some other stylus and seeing how close you can get those points to each other before the patient can no longer distinguish that as two points. Vibration sense can be tested with a tuning fork. And proprioception is the conscious uh, recognition of the position of a limb. So you could be in the dark or have your eyes closed you know where your hand is, whether it's against your body or up in space, etc. That's proprioception. And these are all uh, general somatic afferent afferents. All right, we're talking about a sensory pathway. So in order to perceive our environment, we need receptors on the end of our little afferent uh, neur neurons. So here we go. This is a list of some of the receptors found in the human body. Some are encapsulated, some are not. You can pause the video and look at these on your own. But the important ones that we're going to be concerned with with the dorsal column pathway is from here down, are from here down, the Meissner's corpuscle, Pacinian corpuscle, and these receptors. The Meissner's corpuscle deals with two-point discrimination. The Bacinian corpuscle, which looks like an onion, can sense vibration. And these receptors are located either in the muscle or in the uh, tendon. And they can sense length and tension, stretch and pressure. So these are the ones that are going to be doing the work with proprioception receptors. All right, a quick overview of the dorsal column pathway. Here we can see some brain sections. We're starting out in the spinal cord. This is below T6. This is uh, above T6, so this could be cervical. We move into the medulla because we have an olive and pyramids. We're up in the pons, this big bulging pons here. Then we're up in the midbrain. We can see the cerebral peduncles, the red nuclei, the colliculi. And then we move up into the brain itself, a coronal section of the brain where we can see the thalamus and some of the basal ganglia and the cortex. All right, information comes in. Sensory information, let's say vibration, comes in through the medial division of the dorsal root. There's a medial and lateral division in the dorsal root. The medial division is medial. And M for myelinated. The lateral division is a lightly myelinated or unmyelinated. So the lateral division of the dorsal root deals with pain and temperature. The medial division deals with things found in the dorsal or posterior columns, or the lumniscal pathway, as it's also called. All right, so information, vibration information is going to come in here. There's the dorsal root ganglia with the pseudo-unipolar cells, pseudo-unipolar cells, which are feeding and keeping this axon alive. So that's the dorsal root. Information piles up, enters the dorsal horn, but immediately leaves and piles up in the white matter here called the posterior funiculus, funiculi or posterior columns. Information below T6 is going to be found medially in, in what's called the fasciculus gracilis. Information from the head region or above T6 is going to pile in laterally here in the posterior columns and in, in the fasciculus cuneatus. I think of MG, the small car, medial gracilis. Also, there's a muscle called gracilis. So leg information is medial. Cuneatus means wedge. Fasciculus means bundle. So these are bundles of thousands of axons. The leg ones are medial. The head ones and arm ones are lateral. So this information piles up, 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 all the way up the spinal cord and until it hits the medulla. There these fasciculi end in two nuclei. They synapse. So your first axon goes all the way up to the nucleus of the same name, nuclei of the same name, nucleus cuneatus. 
and nucleus gracilis. Boom. So we're going up there and we synapse. Now second order fibers come out of these nuclei. What are nuclei? Are round bundles of neurons. Second order fibers come out, cross the midline, pile up in another white fiber bundle called the medial lemniscus. Lemniscus means ribbon in Latin. So they come out, they pile up in the lemniscus, and they head north. Now the lemniscus kind of rotates slightly with the most craniad fibers, those found in the, um, the arm and maybe the neck, toward the midline. And then it kind of goes up feet first to make its way into the VPL the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and then tertiary fibers come out of the VPL and make their way to area 312 of the somatosensory cortex. It's an actual picture of brain tissue here and 312 would be here and here. So notice we ended up on the opposite side that we began because we crossed in the medulla at the internal arcuate fibers. That's a quickie all right, once again, here's the brain. Here's the central sulcus. This post-central gyrus is where the sensory information is processed. So this is the somatosensory cortex, area 312, Chicago area code. In front of the central sulcus is area 4 for motor stuff. So this is efferent information. This is afferent information. And here's a drawing of homunculi. The homunculi refer to, if you took a little body, created a little man or woman, and stretched him across the cortex, this is the real estate occupied by various parts of the body as they are referred to the somatosensory cortex. This is the motor. Let's not uh, be concerned with that right now. So you can see that toward the midline, You'll find the feet and the genitalia. You can see all the real estate dedicated to the hand because we use our hands a lot. And here, as you're getting lateral on the uh, parietal cortex, you can see the face distribution, a large distribution for the lips. Remember, the head, though, is not true dorsal column uh, material. The head is really carried by the trigeminal complex. So proprioception in the face would be through the trigeminal complex. That's your homunculus. And here we've just drawn a little man with no head again. This is trigeminal stuff. This is dorsal column distribution of the sensory information when it reaches consciousness. So two-point discrimination, vibra vibration, and proprioception will be perceived in this area of the brain. Here's the corpus callosum, the cingulate gyrus, the thalamus, the caudate, the substantia nigra, the hippocampus. All right, let's look at this again in another way. This is a beautiful picture here, a beautiful drawing by someone, hand-drawn, not traced. Here's the spinal cord, here's the medulla, here's the brain, a coronal section through the thalamus. These two eggs are the thalami. We know this is the medulla because we see pyramids for the cortical spinal tract and we can see nucleus, gracilis, and cuneatus, and the medial lumniscus. Here's our gray matter, here's our white matter, here's our dorsal root, here's our ventral root. All right, receptors out here, Meisner's, uh, corpuscles, or GTOs, or muscle spindles, are going to sense information and send it in to dorsal root. There's a dorsal root ganglion with the cell bodies. Going to come in the dorsal root. Going to find, in this situation, we're up in cervical cord, so we're finding uh, fasciculus cuneatus. Here's gracilis. This information travels up this white fiber bundle all the way up until it hits nucleus cuneatus. So there's your first synapse on that cell body of nucleus cuneatus. Now nucleus cuneatus with all of its thousands of neurons 
sends out axons which cross the midline as internal arcuate fibers. That's what we're seeing right here. They pile up in the medial lumniscus on the opposite side of the body and make their way to the VPL of the thalamus. So that's your second order neuron. And then the thalamus spews out this axon which seeks out area 312, Broadman's area of the somatosensory cortex, post central gyrus. And the vibration or proprioception or two point discrimination is now consciously registered. So there you go. First synapse in nucleus cuneatus, second synapse after traveling up the medial lumniscus is in BPL, third synapse 312 dorsal column pathway. And here is uh, an actual section through the medulla, the fused baby feet. Here's the olive, which is distinctive. I didn't have it in the other drawing. Here's the medial lumnisci, these dark bands. This is the pyramids with the corticospinal tract. Here are your nuclei, nuclei gracilis, nuclei cuneatus. That's where the second order fibers are going to originate from. In this drawing, you can just see we're down in the leg area, so we're going to pile up in fasciculus gracilis, and we're going to end up in nucleus gracilis. Here we are in the arm or cervical region. We're going to pile up in fasciculus cuneatus. We're going to synapse in nucleus cuneatus. Second order fiber is going to cross the midline, pile up in the opposite medial meniscus, and seek out the VPL, which is going to seek out area 312 of the somatory sensory cortex. And this drawing just emphasizes where fasciculus gracilis is, medial for the leg, fasciculus cuneatus, lateral for the uh, arm the upper extremity, neck region, leg is medial to arm. And just a quick mention, the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, ventral spinal cerebellar tract, they register uh, information regarding unconscious proprioception. So when you're asleep or not thinking about it, your cerebellum is always sampling the environment, figuring out muscle tone, muscle position, etc. And in the spinal thalamic tract is for pain and temperature. We'll talk about that in another video. Those of you who like words and don't like pictures, this box represents the population of receptors in our body, in our skin, muscles, ligaments, tendons, etc. So that would be pachinians, misers, GTOs, or muscle spindles. They fire, they send their information in through the dorsal root. This is the dorsal root ganglion. They go through the medial division. They travel up in fasciculus cuneatus or gracilis. The first main synapse is in nucleus cuneatus gracilis. There, the second order fiber crosses the midline as an internal arcuate fiber. They travel up in the medial lumniscus. Up, 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 and synapse in the thalamus, the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus, big sensory relay. Its tertiary fibers then synapse in area 312 of the cerebral cortex and are perceived by consciousness. All right, here we gonna, we're going to go through a little self quiz. And I'll click on these for you. You can actually read this information. So, what do you think one is right here? This represents an afferent sensory fiber carrying vibration sense. Two-point discrimination, appropriate reception of a peripheral nerve in the spinal cord from the receptor to dorsal root ganglion. This fiber is a dendrite. From the DRG to the cord, it's an axon. So what do you think number two is right here and here? 
you can pause this video if you want and you want to quiz yourself you can do that two is the dorsal root ganglia what do you think three is this fiber bundle fasciculus cuneatus because it's lateral to this fiber bundle fasciculus gracilis five We'll skip five because it's really distal to these two guys. What is six and seven? Laterally you find what nucleus? Nucleus cuneatus. Medially you find what nucleus? Nucleus gracilis. Let's go back to five. What do you think five is? It's pointing to a fiber crossing the midline. Those are the internal arcuate fibers, secondary or postsynaptic fibers, leaving the nucleus cuneus or gracilis. What do you think these fibers in eight represent? Traveling all the way up from the medulla to the thalamus. Right, that's the medial lemniscus, Latin for ribbon. And if I can get my slider bar here. What do you think 9 is? It's this green area here. That's the VPL right there. And you can again, you can read this information on your own. And finally, the tertiary fiber goes from VPL to where? This is area 312 of the cerebral cortex. It's found in the postcentral gyrus. Here are the dorsal column pathway synapse and terminate, and their information rises to consciousness. And that, my friend, is the dorsal column pathway. All right, we're going to finish up with a boards-like question and a little description here. And I'll just display this on the screen and you can kind of answer it yourself. I'll read the question because I just like to read. A 59-year-old man is evaluated for lower limb ataxia and bladder dysfunction. Physical examination demonstrates small regular pupils that constrict with accommodation but not in response to light. A VDRL test is positive. A CT scan of the spinal cord would most likely demonstrate atrophy of which of the following structures. I will just be quiet for a second and you can look at that. And here are your answers. You can read these on your own. You can pause the tape and look. The correct answer is A. That's a dorsal column problem brought on by syphilis. Don't forget the Argyle Robinson pupil. And you can see the explanation here for why these weren't right. The dorsal gray horn is for sensory input in general. It could also be the spinal thalamic tract. The lateral column is mainly a motor column. The ventral column, you're going to find some of the uh, choice D, you're going to find some of the spinal thalamic tract. And the ventral horn is for motor neurons. So the correct answer is A. The posterior column is going to be destroyed in syphilis. And we'll finish up with two slides. The Romberg sign for Tabes dorsalis brought on by syphilis. Right here, you can see the dorsal columns are gone. So this person is going to have a stopping gait. He's going to have a positive Ronberg sign. He's going to have problems sensing two-point discrimination and vibration and information coming in from his muscle spindles. The Ronberg sign. Ronberg sign is positive, but the patient requires vision to stand steadily. So you have the person stand with his feet together and he closes, have him close his eyes. If he falls over, then he's got a positive Romberg sign and could very well have tapis dorsalis. Romberg sign is said to be positive in patients with dorsal column injury and negative in cerebellar ataxia. 
Good luck with your exams.